Hi, I'm Linda Van Hart, Visual Arts Coordinator for Common Ground on the Hill. Welcome to a very special broadcast of our Artist Talks. Tonight we are featuring the Scott Scholar for 2020, Felicia Gee. And to, to do that, to honor Felicia, we have a very special guest. Joy Scott is joining us to talk a little bit about the award she established in honor of her mother. And I would like to talk just a little bit about Joyce. I've known her since 1977. Uh -oh. I attended the Thunder Thigh Review, Honey Child Milk and everything that she was doing at Theater Project and laughed myself silly with everybody else in Baltimore. Joyce has been nailing a bunch of big time awards. Uh, last year, she was named a MacArthur Scholar. This year, the American Crafts Council has honored her with the gold, the gold medal to, for consummate craftsmanship. This is the publication of that in the American Crafts Council publication. Here's Joyce in her own home accepting the award, much deserved award. Joyce is a multimedia artist. She's especially known for her beadwork and her installations, uh, but nothing Nothing can top Joyce in person. Ladies and gentlemen, Joyce Scott. Hi, everyone. I'm very, very honored to be here today because I truly believe in common ground on the Hill. Because to me, it's just that, common ground. Um, I go every year, maybe I teach or I did a lot of singing, especially with Leah Gilmore. And I realized that there weren't enough African-American scholars there. And I thought, well, I can be part of the problem or part of the solution. So I established a scholarship in my mother's name uh, for a scholars of color. And I think this is very important. But it just isn't people that, you know, I'm walking down the street and said, hey, babe, would you like a scholarship? Of course not. I looked at people within the arts community who had a great deal to offer, great deal to offer, and who would achieve a lot through this, this intertwining of spirits. And one of the people that I chose, in fact, the last scholar, is Felicia G. Um, I think that she is the fourth or fifth, the fifth scholar. I chose her because of just how multi multi she is. She is a visual artist. She is a sculptor. I'm sorry, she is a um, she is a sculptor, but she also is known for her photography. But she also is a performance artist. Now, you know, this happened in the 60s and 70s. I did it for, for a lot of years, and, and it takes on a, a variety of monikers. Some people just see it as fools on a stage. Other people see it as a real offshoot of a theater or theater, it definitely goes back to what the Greeks and Romans were doing and what Africans are doing now, going in smaller groups to cities and performing. She's one of those people who's combining all of these spirits in one. She is a consummate photographer and visual artist. And now she's doing performance, which makes her estate artwork, the work for the walls come alive. She deals with healing, she deals with community issues, with problems of the day, and with the beauties of life. And that connects so very much to what my mother did, Elizabeth Caldwell Calvert Scott, was a nationally known fiber artist, a quilter, who used to be a sharecropper in South Carolina. That one person, one-on-one, -on -one, hands-on creativity is what fostered my learning as a scholar and as an artist. And what I hope this scholarship does. And on those words about an artist who lives in the city and who is taking on that family tradition of working with an elder, her grandfather, I present to you, Felicia G. That's a rap name. <laughs> Philly. Thank you so much. I like really appreciate what you said and I feel so deeply, deeply honored. Like I admire you so much and your work and your mother's Thank work. You. Um, so I'm just beyond words, uh, grateful for that and grateful for being 
um, now a part of the Common Ground family. So yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so I'm gonna just jump right in then. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna start with a video piece that I um, just finished and then I'll go into talking about what my, my work and the different facets of my work. Okay, let me see. The fire has already come and gone. Now the water, still and present, carrying ancient wisdoms and gifts of sustenance, bound tightly to stories of resilience and peace, has flooded the interior passageways of my brain. Cerebral hemispheres now uncover what is true what is innate to a once frazzled being is actually peace, is actually surrender. Keep me full with your clarity, O Lodumare. Make what was once densely packed as light as a feather floating so effortlessly on your current. Lead me deeper into wisdoms that anchor me in presence and flood me with spirit. Pulsing with life force, I share. It is not that I now float above the experience of life, but that it flows through me so uninhibited that even grief bleeds into an inner deepening of true peace. Stillness chiseled. chiseled by life's undulations, grounded in the reality that we will not just survive, we will thrive. We will embrace wonder and peak with joy. We will cry with reverence and peace as it proliferates our bodies and seeps into our genetics so that future generations will experience it as the essence of being alive, perpetuating a new cycle, that of freedom, true freedom, that of bliss, of innate abundance. Ashe.
So I'm going to begin by first saying thank you again to Joyce Scott. And um, I've just been so inspired by Joyce Scott and Elizabeth Telfer Scott for most of my artistic career. So I'm so grateful to be um, chosen for this um, and to be sharing work with you all tonight. Um, about that work, I'm gonna read a little bit about that work. So I'm gonna go between reading about the work um, and, and just speaking about the work. Um, the piece that you just watched is called Eight Minutes and 46 Seconds. Um, it's named for the approximate amount of time that the officer kneeled on George Floyd's neck, ultimately killing him. Um, so this work is, um, in the voiceover, I'm breathing and I'm praying for eight minutes and 46 seconds, and both in honor of George Floyd and in honor of so many who have been brutally murdered by police, um, in honor of our ancestors and, and their many unimaginable hardships and sacrifices, in honor of those practices and memories that we've inherited, those prayers that we have all prayed for liberation and for true freedom. And I'm breathing and praying for black people, for my grandparents, for my mother, for my brother. Um, I'm breathing for our liberation, for our empowerment. And I'm breathing to become an embodiment of freedom. The moving images that overlap are anchored by one image depicting me breathing. Um, and these are, these are of moments, those images are of moments of my life, most of which happening are happening during the pandemic with my grandparents, um, gardening with my grandfather, paying reverence and respect to my ancestors, writing prayers for my mother, uh, exploring how I care for myself and how we care for one another, um, especially during these deep challenges and times of, of deep grief and bereavement. Um, how do we heal? What does rest look like in this time? How do we, how do we anchor and how do we uh, in, endeavor to reclaim ancestral practices of self-preservation? How, how can we speak life into one another? Um, so the prayer in the beginning is a prayer that I wrote one day after I was, I took a nap after this really long trip um, and I woke up with those words in my mind. And so I wrote them down immediately. And it's a prayer that I continually pray and, and use in my work um, in various places, which you'll, you'll begin to see. Um, so how do we reconnect with joy? This is a work of contemplation, of meditation. Um, it is a place to both meet um, the questions and the answers. And so that is that work and I'm gonna go into more generally talking about my work and then I'm gonna share a virtual exhibition that I just completed with you all. Um, I was this year and last year, I was a Sondheim, um, Janet and Walter Sondheim Artscape Prize finalist. Uh, and last year I did a, 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 a exhibition in the physical realm at the Walters Art Museum. This year we did virtual exhibitions in light of everything that's happening with COVID. So um, I wanna share that with you all. Let me share my screen and show you some more of my work here. So I'm gonna read a bit from my artist statement and then I'm gonna go in deeper. My work documents transition, explores healing, ritual, and ceremonial rites of passage. I'm interested in the intersection between the physical and the spiritual, as well as the transitional space between birth and death. Through the work, I become a channel for the stories and rituals and visions that find their way back to me through genetic memory. I heal transgenerational trauma and rewrite subconscious patterns of suffering passed down in my lineage while I reclaim ancient ancestral wisdom. Each medium I use is its own language. Working in photography, performance, installation, video, fibers, mixed media, and painting allows me to create narrative works that evolve over time. And that really makes me think about Auntie Joyce because you know she's traversing so many mediums in such a beautiful way. So I work with a lot of different mediums and my work can span many years. Um, each body of work that I create is interconnected and interwoven. Um, often the materials of 
or, or residual elements of one work, for example, ashes or fire or soil will find life in another work years later. This can be seen in the exhibition that I'm gonna show you later where an example is um, I did a ritual ceremony in which I cut my hair. And in that process, I saved those locks and those locks were then sewn into a mixed media quilt, which is a collaboration with my grandmother seven years later. So the work really embodies the fact that perception has the ability to change our genetic expression and that by engaging in the senses, we can create new neural connections in the brain, um, engaging in neuroplasticity and thereby actively practicing and participating in epigenetics, which truly means that by changing our perception, we change our genetic expression. So um, my grandfather is an interdisciplinary artist uh, he has a deep impact on my practice and his fingerprint is really in my work. My earliest memories of making are with my grandfather. Um, we would draw all day. We would just, um, he's an illustrator, a sculptor, a painter, um, very much a multifaceted artist that is still creating work. In this image, you can kind of see his, um, I believe it's his right eye. Yeah. he is actually currently legally blind um, and has had six cornea transplants. And so even with that, he's making amazing work and he is just resilient and keeps going. And um, so I think a lot about him and, and I think also about the connection between like my relationship with my grandfather and Joyce Scott's relationship with her mother, Elizabeth Telfer Scott. I think that's so beautiful and it really reminds me of that. And I told her that when, I think when we first met because that relationship is is so deep and, and I've learned so much over the years from him and the way that he, he works and the way that he um, channels through his work and the way that um, he traverses different ways of expressing himself. And so he means a lot to me. And a part of my purpose, I feel as an artist is really to share his work as much as possible because, um, because of various family happenings and because of his eyes, he hasn't had, to me, I feel the exposure that he should have as an artist. He hasn't been able to um, have his work as widely shared. And so I really believe he is such a gift and such a blessing and, um, yeah, I hope to share his work more widely as well. But this is my grandfather. These are images of him creating that I took. The video was done by a friend of mine named Paul Bravo. Um, and so we just had some some things written about us, um, one of which is in Be More Art and about our relationship. My mother's writing also finds a, a place in my work. Um, I work with words a lot in my work. Writing is always a part of my process. And my mother is a poet. So, um, and also me and my mother really, uh, the healing aspect is very intertwined with my relationship with my mother. And both of us are on this journey together. And this is a piece that, that uh, is called Free Me, Free Us. And it includes a, a journal entry that my mother wrote. Um, on September 2nd, 1999. Then my grandmother is a huge part of my practice as well, a part of my life. Um, she is a glue that holds everything together. And I have a project that I'm working on that is in the exhibition I'm gonna show called Genetic Memory that we are collaborating on. We are both teaching ourselves how to quilt at this time. Um, and this is this will be our second quilt that we're working on. And um, my great grandmother, her mother quilted, but was never able to teach us. Um, she ended up having Alzheimer's and I wasn't able to spend as many years learning from her as I would have liked. But me and my grandmother are using that time to reclaim and, um, and just journey in learning quilt making. So my grandmother not only collaborates with me, but also is like, the sustenance for our whole family structure. But my family is like really the core of, and my lineage is the core of um, what comes through me in the work. That's my great grandmother, her mother, who I just spoke about. Um, 
from my great grandmother's skill in quilting, my mother's writing, my grandmother's sewing, um, my grandfather's art practice have all found manifestation in my work. And in this way, the work is not just mine, but it's also my grandfather's, my grandmother's, my mother's, and those who came before us. Ultimately, I am here to unearth the deep well of ever replenishing strength, resilience, and joy that lives in the, our bones and in the back corridors of our hearts to ritualize the mundane, to rediscover peace, wonder, and happiness for us all as we are healing. And my work comes from a very visceral place. It's a very emotive and honest place that I go to in my work. It's a place that I go to to process. Um, my work alchemizes transgenerational trauma and teaches me to embrace transgenerational wisdom. These are two portraits that are years apart. This one is in 2010, this one is in 2018, um, after a ritual performance that I did called Intrepid, which I'm gonna show you some images of in a bit. My work teaches me to embrace and reconnect with transgenerational wisdom and the elements are really important to my work. Um, water, air, earth, fire, ether. I engage with the elements and the senses in a very uh, intentional and um, really uh, just potent way in the work. This is an image from a tea ceremony that I did um, with about 40 participants. This was at sunset and all of the elements are represented. This is a really an example of a sensory exploration in my work and also delves into the research, a research by a scientist um, called Dr. Emoto who looked at water molecules and how um, different intentions can change the shape of water molecules, can change the entire structure of molecular structure of water. Um, so that's, that's what this is about. This also has a core in healing and is a deep process of us shifting our internal landscape through the process of tea and the meditation of tea. Um, so I'm gonna share more work and I'm just gonna go flow through the work as I talk about my practice. Um, through my work, this is, a, this is actually an above um, bird's eye view of a ritual performance entitled Intrepid Three. This is the actually the fourth um, time that I've done performed this ritual and it is um, it was in 2018 so it, it had been about um, over five years that I performed this four times in Trepid Zero and Trepid One and Trepid Two and Trepid Three and the last three of which I filmed and, and um, documented here I'm writing in a spiral formation I am, I am, I am, I surrender, 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 all the way out to the edges of the of this paper. It is a, about a nine foot by nine foot paper. And it, this is on Martha's Vineyard um, in Oak Bluffs at the Inkwell, which was a really sacred and beautiful place to do this and was really important um, that it happened there. And so it, it unfolded in such a beautiful way, but this work is, really important to me because it is an example of me using my body and using movement and using repetition and using charcoal as a purifier, um, charcoal as um, a, a ritual tool, but also as a residual of fire. I'm using that to rewire my neural pathways. This is a literal uh, vehicle for epigenetics, which, which is basically that by shifting the environment the emotional environment of you know my my cells that I'm able to uh, shift the genetic expression of my DNA pretty much um, that I'm able to rewrite and rewire create new neural pathways and allow other ones to die. So this work is really deep and potent and powerful and and I could do a whole presentation on that, but I wanted to share it. Um, so through the work I am using. Um, I'm transforming patterns of suffering through ritual practices that I use that use intuition, movement, and repetition to build new framework in the brain. Memories of suffering can be hardwired in the brain, and so much of my work has been in learning how to rewire my brain, how to use my art to do this. A lot of emotions that I felt when I was um, growing up were the exact same emotions that my mother felt when I when I was in her womb. So 
like I was saying, my mother and I share a really important bond, but also um, that the exploration of my mother has also helped me to explore and understand um, my emotional and psychological landscape and also to understand what it means transgenerational trauma, transgenerational memory, like what does that mean? It means that I literally was in a way in the womb of my grandmother because I, um, you know, my mother, I was inside of my mother at the time she was inside of my grandmother. So, you know, that, that, that we don't know how far memory goes back. There's been studies on mice that memory goes back up to three generations. There have been studies on worms, a certain type of worm, I can't remember what type, but that memory can go back up to 13 generations. So I feel the remnants of stories, of experiences in my body, in my, just in, inside of me, and they, and they manifest in various ways. And I am able to decipher, understand, um, decode, um, learn new stories, and also to rewire those things which are not ultimately serving myself and my lineage so that when I carry a child in my womb, I'm not passing down any uh, disempowering ways of being or any suffering. Um, so a lot of uh, the subconscious programming, okay. So in addition to that, one of the things I was researching at the time with this uh, work as you can see, it says, I am, I am, I am, I surrender, I surrender, I surrender, I surrender. Something I was really thinking about at the time was dance. Um, I was exploring molecular relationships and the spiral and what the spiral means, um, which I'll get into. I have some images that, that talk more about that. But I was definitely exploring how um, our subconscious minds are, are, are built and how to reach that and how to how to rebuild that and so some of the ways to do that are through repetition are through new experience are through sensory exploration um and and through a meditative experience so when i'm doing intrepid it becomes like a meditative experience it does almost get me into like a trance state where i am writing this thing that i am affirming over and over and over again i am i am i am i surrender i surrender i surrender i surrender i surrender with my whole body and with all of my energy. Um, this is a installation where I did, where I performed Intrepid 1 and Intrepid 2, which was a group performance. Um, and it's a three channel projection in this space. Um, this is Intrepid 2, right before we began. And I'm doing this work with four really amazing women who um three of whom were in early recovery for addiction um and we all created these spirals simultaneously so this work um it foreshadowed a fire that i had in my apartment uh, where my window caught on, on fire and it resembled this painting, which I had painted a few weeks prior. So the work that I'm doing sometimes is, is giving me messages that I have no idea what they are. And sometimes in creating the work um, until, until they manifest and I see them in these ways. Um, I, I, this is a whole story, which I would love to tell you all if you um, definitely you know reach out to me and I'll tell you more about it. So this is from that fire. Um, and there were various messages in the fire, one of which I had a poster of Deborah Willis's book on the wall and it said beauty and um, everything burnt away except for the word beauty. So the fire was really important in getting me to the work of Intrepid because I started to think about charcoal and I started to work more with charcoal and think of it on a deeper level as a purifier, um, as, as a ritual tool. And I started to use it that way. This is from the installation of my exhibition for the Sondheim last year. And this, this is, these are three self-portraits that are actually light boxes. And um, that's from Intrepid 3. And also on the right is the, is the, um, the prayer that I spoke 
in eight minutes and 46 seconds. It's written on this black paper um, with white charcoal. This is me writing and working on that installation. So now to talk about the work from the space. So I would say that at the core of my work is really this catalyst for creating a paradigm shift in my psychology by both understanding and uprooting um, certain things that have an impact on both the past and the future generations. So there's this essence of um, engaging with this continuum of time as well. And, and the spiral is relevant to that as well. And my work uh, is really connected to birth and death and rebirth, which I feel is really potent and prominent in this exhibition. Um, the work is born from this tension between the pol polarizing beliefs of limitation and of limitlessness and an understanding that limitation is illusory. Um, and this show, this is a, a, a snapshot from the uh, video piece that I did that's called um, The Site of Memory, named after a work by Toni Morrison, actually an essay by Toni Morrison. And so, I'm gonna go through some detailed images of work that is in the show, um, because when you walk through the show, you don't get as much detail. So this is from a ritual that I did that was a hair cutting ceremony where I dug this hole in the earth and um, partially buried myself in that hole. I got into it and partially buried myself in there and I cut each lock off one by one and my hair laid out beside me and to me it appeared like wings and it felt that way too it felt very freeing and it was necessary and important at that time in my life for that level of release and so I documented this process through both video and through photography the photographs are inside of the space um, for the exhibition just so the the video goes through the entire process of me cutting my hair um, but this is just an excerpt. These are images from that that are actually displayed in the exhibition. This is a bird's eye view of me right after I had cut all my hair. And what was interesting is that the sun wasn't out the whole day and the sun came out in that exact moment. And this is actually in this this woman's front yard, which is another story, <laughs> which is it was beautiful that she allowed me to do this in her front yard. But something I had known that I wanted to do this work, but something called me to that specific spot. And I'm reading vows to myself and intentions that I have for after I've I've released. And um, this is a a from my own perspective, it's a panoramic composite of my perspective of that moment. And um, that's my hair right beside me on each side of it. This is from the, the installation. Let me see if I have, that's from this work. In the center, there's two, there's three screens. Two of the screens on, on either side are showing very tranquil nature scenes, one of which is really water-based and one is really earth-based. In the center is this video in which I'm, I'm appearing to ingest and regurgitate this spiral. And here is a still photograph from that um, work, which, which I consider to be like an endurance performance because it took about 17 hours and 17 and a half hours to uh, film this whole process in which I'm appearing to literally ingest this white spiral and then it cuts to a forest area where I'm appearing to regurgitate that and it flows out around me. This work is a lot about pain, about the processing of pain, the exhibition. Um, this work is called Breaking Open and the exhibition uh, was called First the Pain and it was during my time as resident healing artist for a campaign called the New Day Campaign, which was um, based in Baltimore, founded by Peter Brune and was with the mission of um, doing, I believe it was about 30, I don't know, it may have, I think it was 16 exhibitions and 32 public programs centered around healing 
um, and, and releasing the stigma around behavioral health and mental health challenges and, um, and substance use disorder. So that was all a part of this process. And in, uh, so that video is showing the center and in the center of this space is where I performed Intrepid 1 and Intrepid 2. This is talking more about the spiral. So it's showing that the spiral in my work, it talks about the fact that the spiral is present in so many facets of our lives. Um, and it is both molecular and it's galactic. On the bottom left corner is a photograph of molecules colliding um, and they create these spirals. So I'm interested in that, like the idea of collision as creative uh, rather than destructive and create. And, and so that moment of collision, scientists are trying to find the, the God molecule, they call it the God molecule, the Higgs boson, which is um, the molecule of creation. Um, so they do that through applying extreme heat to these molecules and those molecules collide and create these spirals. And then to the right on the bottom is a hurricane over the earth. And on the top is galaxy and a seashell. And, and then on the top left is um, a photograph from a work that my grandfather and I did together. Um, where we use fire and charcoal and in a spiral formation. And that was in 2006 before I started to really incorporate spirals into the work or the work started incorporating the spirals because I feel that I'm not, the work is guiding me. Um, and this is a piece called Genetic Memory. This is the collaborative piece that I was saying that myself and my grandmother are working on and have been working on um, since 2018. It is a quilt right now. It's at the stage of being pieced and we're sewing it together. Um, it's still being like, we're, we haven't gotten to the stage of quilting yet, but we are in the process of getting there and we want to hand quilt the whole thing. It is a combination of photographs of myself and my family, um, my, my grandmother's handwriting, my mother's handwriting, um, my hair from grounding ceremony is in this work, is sewn into this work. Images of my great grandmother's and um, my mother's brain scans. And it hangs on a, a, a piece of driftwood. This is an example of when it was installed in a space. It's my great grandmother, Josephine. Close up images of the work. My grandparents' hands, my great grandmother, Louise. This is my grandmother working on the quilt. So a lot of my work is, um, is also very centered around these relationships and, and creating moments where I get to do these things um, and learn things with my family. And, um, and I really cherish that time and I cherish my experiences that I have with my grandparents. This is a portrait I recently took of my grandmother um, last month, I believe. And this is in the exhibition, which I love. I love, I love this image of her hair. And um, this is a snapshot of the exhibition. I'm gonna to go to the exhibition now so I can walk you all through. Okay. So as I was saying, it was this is a part of the, the Sondheim Artscape Prize. Um, exhibition, finalist exhibition. And this is my exhibition. It's called We Are the Infinite Disguised as the Finite. And that title for me, it functions as um, a proclamation, a reclamation, um, and, and like a threat that you cannot erase us. We are infinite. We will grieve and we will find joy and we cannot be extinguished. And so 
as you can see, it starts off with uh, the work of my hair um, during grounding ceremony from my perspective. The, the exhibition has the sound of eight minutes and 46 seconds, which that film is gonna begin to play here. And the, the sound kind of permeates the space when you get close to that, that piece. Now, this was a new uh, paradigm for me, uh, working the fire in this way. has already come and gone. I'm gonna turn it. Now the water me. still and present, carrying ancient wisdoms and gifts of sustenance bound tightly to so this this exhibition was a new paradigm for me i had never done anything like this um and so it came with its challenges some of which are um dealing with you know things like internet speeds and the whole digital realm um but i really dived in and i found ways to make a space that felt like a space that I would want to create in the physical realm in real life. And um, this spiral at the center of the space is called the immeasurable truth. And this work is, it was created um, with compost from my grandfather's garden, as well as with sea salt. And I built this spiral out in our uh, backyard and I, taught myself how to 3D scan it. I photographed it from all angles, taught myself how to 3D scan it into the computer and use 3D modeling programs to get it into this space because I really wanted to have that physical element in the space. Um, so as you can see, um, that this is again me, uh, I would have, in, in the real, in the reality, um, I would paint this on the wall and this is the prayer that I um, spoke about earlier that came after a dream. The, those are images of grounding ceremony and this is the image from breaking open inside of the alcove. And so I'm gonna move around a bit more so you can see some more. This piece here is called the site of memory. And it does glitch a bit. So there is, I might go to the link. I'll show you that I, where I've, um, I have a link of each one. Um, so when you click on the work, you can click on the link, the actual link. Let me show you. So you can click right up here and it'll tell you information about the work. And then you can also click this link to be able to watch on a separate screen. So I'll let you watch a bit of this. The both of the video works I've created are from this year. Um, recently, just last month, I made these works. Um, the 18, eight minutes and um, 46 seconds that work was a series of video that I've been taking throughout the whole pandemic um, and just documenting my processes. So on this next wall, you have um, genetic memory and back to grounding ceremony. So I think I'm at a point where I can begin to take questions. If you um, have any questions, Linda, let me know. I'm here and ready to answer any questions. Computer oh. skills, your digital learning is, has just stretched and grown so much in order to be able to put this together. What yes. a daunting task. It really is. It took me like, 19 hours straight and <laughs> it was really it was really unlike anything i've ever done um so thank you yes that is so true i want to show you this one work that i forgot to show you this is um 
this is called grandma and this is the image of my grandmother and I juxtapose it with this uh, poem by Lucille Clifton and the poem says I'm just going to read it because it's so uh, appropriate for this show and it speaks a lot to the conceptual basis of like why all this work is together. I am accused of tending to the past as if I made it, as if I sculpted it with my own hands. I did not. This past was waiting for me when I came, a monstrous unnamed baby. And I, with my mother's itch, took it to breast and named it history. She is more human now, learning languages every day, remembering faces, names, and dates. When she is strong enough to travel on her own, beware, she will. You are a powerful storyteller. Thank you. Thank you so much. That means a lot. This is the first time that we have ever tried something like this. I expect there are several people watching in person now, but what happens is our audience comes back to these and we have over a hundred watching many of our gallery talks. Wow. So I certainly hope that our audience can learn a lot more about you and your family, your artistic inheritance, uh, which is very, very rich. Um, and we are all in hopes that we can meet in person, gather uh, next summer. And I definitely want to include you uh, amongst our instructors and in our instructors uh, show you and I can dream stuff up like we did this gallery talk. <laughs> we'll put it together. That um, sounds great. I love those, that. Yeah. yeah. I have been introducing Felicia to some of our family uh, through e emails and, and websites. Uh, Felicia and Ellen Elms have gotten to know each other. For example, Ellen's been with us probably 25 of our 26 years. Um, and, and that will continue, uh, that introduction will continue. Uh, people will want to contact you and get to know more about you. Uh, and this, this was only the beginning. All of the work that you've seen in Felicia's production tonight has been done within this year. I talked about in some of the first gallery talks, sheltering at home and how that's so different than migrating at home. Sheltering at home is, and migrating at home is an exploration. And you've just seen a fantastic example of an individual migration. One's been happening at my house too in all of my studios. <laughs> I think artists have really used this gift of time to be very creative. I'd like for you to know that the student art show is up and running. It's not complete yet, but you can view it online. Maria has been a very busy and talented woman. Many of the works from week one and two are already online. They're by categories. So if you're very curious about what people did in three-dimensional art classes, you can go to that category. The two-dimensional category contains photography and digital photography. Uh, as well as drawing and painting and all of those things. So uh, once it's complete, by, if you're a, th a week three artist, please use the form provided to you and submit your best work. Please take really good photographs of your work because presentation makes all the difference. You know, do it on a blank space so that your work is featured. Make sure that nothing extraneous is in the photograph and send those submissions to Maria to post. Um, if you could do that by the beginning of next week, week three artists, uh, perhaps we'll have week three up and running. Of course, this broadcast is archived. So if you have friends that would enjoy seeing it, please invite them to the site. Introduce them to our new family member, Felicia G. 
she's now part of our common ground family. Thank you for joining Joy Scott, Felicia Gee, and Linda Van Hart, your visual arts coordinator for Common Ground on the Hill for a very exciting, unique, one of a kind gallery talk. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.